Hi, and welcome back to Neural Splendor. We're going to look at part two of fault code 1117, basically is low battery voltage to the ECM. Remember that electricity travels in a circle, so it starts at a terminal on the battery and it ends at the other terminal. So you can have a problem with the ground or with a hot. I'll quickly say that I have seen on the formed battery cables that a lot of uh, manufacturers use, Peterbilt, Volvo, pretty much on all the trucks, where they run the ECM wire right out next to the battery cable on those thick red or black cables. I've seen those wires that run out of that formed plastic cut it open green inside. So even though it looks good on the outside, you need the low check circuits if you're having trouble with uh, low voltage faults of the ECM. You need to low test wires. Common says to use a headlight, uh, a regular old analog headlight, nothing, no LED, the old headlight with the element in it. And that's between two and five amps. If the wire will carry that, supposedly the wire is in good condition. I'm not going to get into wire gauge and amperage loads, uh, maybe some other time with that. I just want to say when you're checking wires with a digital ohmmeter, you need to remember that digital meters send very tiny currents through wires. And then they measure the voltage when it left and the voltage when it got back to the meter. And I was told that if you have a copper wire with 50 strands and all the strands are broke but one and you check the resistance it could check under 10 ohms or good with that meter that digital voltmeter because of the way it checks the wires it's not checking with a load it's just basically checking with a tiny current and it's measuring a voltage drop at the other end. So digital uh, voltometers are wonderful things, but you have to understand their limitation when you're checking wiring. The other thing I'll say is, generally speaking, you want your wires to be under two and a half ohms. And when you hook your meter lead, you should take your meter leads if you have an REL setting or relative on your meter. What that does is that will zero out the ohms. So you hold the meter leads together because there are resistance in them. Set the meter on ohms. If you have a manual meter, set it to ohms, not to K ohms or M ohms. Set it to ohms. And then hold the meter leads tightly together and hit the relative button. And if you've got 0.1 or 0.2 ohms, it should go to zero. The meter has just taken into account the resistance in its own leads and connections, and you're starting where you should at zero. So uh, that's a little tip on the meters. So let's get going and move on to default 117. From here, I'm going to go into a program that I use uh, where I'll be uh, narrating, but you'll be looking at some photographs, and I'll be talking about them. Okay, let's go. This is the fault printout from one of the uh, engines in one of the machines we have. It happens to be a Cummins QSL CM2350. And if you notice down three quarters of the way down the list on the left is 1117. It's inactive. Uh, there was four counts of it. It does not drive a light lamp. In some cases, it will. In this industrial calibration, it doesn't. And under description, it says power supply loss with ignition on, data erratic, intermittent, or incorrect. And then if you look to the far right, it happened. Uh, the first count was 19 hours ago, and the fourth count was 5 hours, 19 minutes, and 19 seconds before we took this image. So uh, we're going to talk about that 11117. Now in this case, I know why this is logging 1117s, and it's because this machine has a battery disconnect switch, and the operator did not wait the full two minutes after shutting the key off. 
And so every time he didn't wait those two minutes, we logged one of the 1117s. So uh, in this image, it's not a concern, but I wanted you to see uh, the fault line and the nomenclature after it. Here's a generic uh, drawing of a typical ECM power supply. Usually there's a couple grounds, at least two and two hots going into the ECM. As ECM architecture change, the plugs might be incorporated into a 50 or 60 pin plug and might be a separate four pin. It just depends. On the newer ECMs, there's two, I think they're 86 pin plugs. They look the same. Power goes in one of those, not the other. So let's take a look here of this simple drawing of a starter. And that starter draws, for the sake of argument, 500 amps to start the engine in winter. We've got a 2 watt cable going to it on the positive and a 2 watt to the negative. This is the positive. And it can supply only about 500 amps. So in the summer when the starter draws 300 amps, the cable can supply 500. There's plenty of amperage for that yellow ring tongue which has the red wire that goes off to the left, and that is your ECM power supply wire. In the winter, when the engine's very cold and the oil stick, that starter might draw 500 amps. If it does, that cable can only draw supply 500 amps. So what happens when the ECM says, I need about 20 amps to start the engine, it doesn't have it. So if the, you start it for current, the voltage drops and now the engine starts and you've got a low voltage code. If the current drops too low, say the starter wants 520 amps, it won't start because the ECM voltage drops so low because there's no current to go through the ECM. So that's why uh, most engine manufacturers do not want people running ECM power feeds off of the starter. It's just a potential problem. This next photo is the red bar on the bottom is the top of your battery and this is your positive stud. The black uh, rectangle up on top would be the nut that holds everything tight and your gray bar with the thick red wire going off to the left is your battery cable going to the starter and underneath that the yellow is the ring tongue that someone put on there or a wire end wire eyelet whatever you want to call it with the smaller red wire that is your ecm power feed now i've seen this many times and this is a terrible thing to do and here's the reason why so that starter in the last slide drew, drew 500 amps. So you've got four batteries and let's say that all the batteries are the same. So each battery is going to contribute about 125 amps to that starter uh, if they're all four going to the uh, positive lug gang together. So look at the ring tongue that is between that cable that goes to the battery and the silver battery post with the plus on it. It's much smaller, diam smaller diameter, there's less surface area, and the current has to come up through the battery post, through that ring tongue, and then into the starter wire to go to the starter. Well, that ring tongue probably can't pass 125 amps for very long before it gets pretty hot. Once it gets hot, the resistance goes up, and the voltage on the red wire going to the ECM goes way down. So this is a very bad thing to do. If you see this, you need to put that ring tongue on top of the battery wire between the nut and the battery cable, never down between. When you put it up on top, you have to make sure that it seats squarely on that polished surface where your connection is. And remember, most batteries have stainless steel nuts on top. Those do not conduct well. Uh, around 2007 or 8, Volvo started putting one brass nut along with all the stainless. Uh, there was actually a service bulletin 
not to jump trucks using those stainless nuts. Either go right to the starter or if it had the big brass pins on the, on the frame that you could jump off of, use those. So you uh, want to make sure that your cabling and wiring is hooked up so you're not shooting yourself in the foot with the bad connection that you created. I'll talk quickly about fuses. And here we have a fuse. And if you see the circle with the purple arrow, this is where the, the fusible link is actually attached to the spade that goes down in the socket. You can get cracks there. I don't know if it's caused from heat or vibration. I've seen it a number of times. And the fuse will actually conduct some current, but it'll be uh, constantly starving the circuit for voltage. You'll, if you have a device that looks for low voltage, there'll be quite a few faults. I had a chipper one time that, that uh, would randomly die, and the problem was the ignition fuse had a micro, micro crack in it. And I'm going to show you an enlargement of a micro crack. This is an enlargement of the area where that fusible link hits the spade on the side. And as you can see, there's a crack through there. Uh, it, to see it with the naked eye is almost impossible. Uh, the only way to really find it is actually put a load through the fuse that's three quarters of the rated amperage. And usually it'll just, the voltage will drop. So it's always, always a good practice to throw spare fuses in right away if you have a low voltage problem. When doing troubleshooting, don't shoot yourself in the foot. When you start checking leads in ECM connectors and plugs, there are proper test wires and leads that you use to check those. Get the proper ones and use them. Many times, I have personally been involved in on-the-phone conversations with technicians who were good technicians who had their little special paper clip that always worked checking leads and never damaged them. And more than once, they had to drive many hours with new leads, take plugs apart and put them in because their little paper clip did what's in the bottom picture here. It spread the contacts. Only use the proper test lead. I can't emphasize that enough. So now I want to talk a little bit about what goes on in a connection. This is really critical and this is something that's hidden out of view, but it goes on. So the three different connections that you see. Top is good contact. Notice that the yellow spade which is in the slide-in connector, has full contact all the way through, and that black connector is supplying sufficient pressure to that, that ample current that it's designed to pass will pass. The middle one, poor contact, that can be just an old connection, one that got overheated a couple times, and you've only got marginal connection. When you really need the amperage, you're not going to have it. That's going to be a low battery fault. The bottom drawing is what contacts look like when you use the improper tool to check them. Always use the right test lead to check modern day contacts in the plugs. Besides being difficult to replace them and reassemble the plug, you cause yourself ghosts, problems that come and go when you spread a contact. All contacts have to have what's called pin drag. So when you have the proper test lead, when you push it into that contact, it should go in and slide in snugly and come out snugly. If it goes in loose or it'll fall out if you hold it up and shake it, that's a problem. It's got to be nice and tight like the top photo. Many times the center drawing and the bottom drawing are what causes 1117s because there's a bad contact or someone has checked it previously and done damage. And if the damage is marginal, then you'll have this nagging you forever. So 
don't forget to check your contacts. Very, very important. Okay, so now we're going to recap. In conclusion, quick key cycles or a battery kill switch if shut off before the ECM has power time to power down correctly can cause fault code 1117, low battery voltage. Low test your batteries. Verify that all of the batteries are good. Some trucks have three, some have four. Unhook them all. If they're low charge, charge them up for a few hours till they're up to full charge, then load test and make sure they all pass. One battery that's got a problem can pull down the voltage in the system and cause the fault. Make sure your system voltage is normal. Ask the operator, it has a voltmeter, does it stay where, and, uh, where it should all day? Does it jump up and down? Make sure there's not an alternator issue. Replace your fuses. Verify there's no corrosion in the fuse sockets. Make sure that uh, if you wiggle the wires that attach to the fuses, that there's no opens. You don't lose power. Ohm out wiring to look for high resistance or open low leads. Check grounds as well as voltage feed connections. Make sure they're tight. Make sure they're clean. Low test wiring if you need to. Verify wiring is correct placely, not between a load, heavy load carrying uh, cable. Always on top, against a nut, or off of a fuse block connection. Pin drag all of your connectors. Make sure they're good. Rarely will it be a hardware failure. I have seen ECMs that will have an active low battery voltage, and it's actually the ECM has a, a chip failure in it very rare and software can cause this that's also rare but it can happen thanks for joining me on neural splendor and we'll see you next time